much indeed. Um, it's a pleasure to see you all and a very good evening to Europe, a very good afternoon to London and a very good morning to the United States. Uh, yes, as um, Martin very kindly said, I am effectively somebody who, while you are working incredibly hard, spends their day on holiday pretending to work. Um, I want, though, to have a look into the future because, as, as Martin was saying, um, things are going to get much better. I predict that 2020s as a decade will be the best ever for tourism, largely thanks to your efforts. You are all doing remarkable jobs in incredibly difficult circumstances and your reward will come. Meanwhile, I'm having a really, really tough time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there I was uh, doing a little bit of filming off the coast of um, Malta. Um, had to go to the Grand Place in uh, Brussels to taste some beer. That was fairly arduous. After that, it was a fly drive around uh, Cuba, um, which um, I thoroughly enjoyed. And then drifting downstream in the uh, wonderful southwest of China. Uh, worst of all, I think, in the very arduous... Um, <laughs> so-called career that I've had was um, drifting around Sydney Harbour, being massaged by lovely Nadine while talking nonsense to a BBC camera. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very tough job, but somebody has to do it. Oh, and this isn't quite what you think. Um, I was actually uh, invited to the awards evening for the uh, not very remarkable venues, and um, there was simply no atmosphere. Sorry. Um, so I'm so excited, but I'm also so apologetic. As we were hearing, you are going to get an absolute world preview of what the 2020s will bring for the world, for the cultural world, for the fantastic ruins to roller coasters world of tickets. This is an exclusive piece of work that nobody else has seen and which I have prepared, especially for you at this uh, great ceremony. But I do also have an exclusive announcement. I'm speaking to you um, from London and um, I can apologize on behalf of the British people for Brexit. Um, it's four and a half years, ladies and gentlemen, since the British people, I don't know what they were smoking, um, decided that they were going to uh, not be part of the European Union. Um, we have, what, uh, another three weeks until 2021 when we are finally going, everybody, and we still don't know what will happen. I can, though, make one firm prediction, which is that the pound, which has been pretty pathetic, um, will sink still further. So I predict that you will be able to get more than uh, one pound for each euro. So a good time, perhaps, to go to the UK. And um, yes, I'm very sorry on behalf of the, uh, the British people. Um, you might have heard that this evening Boris Johnson is going to Paris to meet Ursula von der Leyen, the uh, head of the of European Commission. Who knows where it will end? It's exhausting, but there's so much to celebrate elsewhere. Um, so from Amsterdam, of course, you can go to the capital of the world's most popular country. That is, of course, France. Hasn't had a great year, but it will do in future. And one reason it's going to do really well in future, I think, is because on the 23rd of January, yes, so um, about six weeks time, we should see finally the opening of the Francoise, Francois Pinot uh, Museum. This is an extraordinary thing. If you recognise that building, it is the former stock exchange, the Bourse de Commerce. And the idea is that uh, uh, you will... Uh, be able to go into this uh, wonderful building, which has been dramatically uh, changed by um, the great Japanese architect Taudo, Tado Ando. Um, it's got a giant cylinder you can see nesting in the atrium. And best of all, the uh, celebrity chef Michel Brass uh, will be opening a restaurant at the museum. So it is going to be yet one more reason to head back to Paris. And let's hope on behalf of our great uh, colleagues and friends, partners in Paris that and, and the rest of France, of course, that we 
do get an end to, to the uh, uh, current lockdown, as we call it, um, by the 15th of January, which is when I believe it ends. Ah, time to go to the Netherlands, of course, the home country of tickets. But um, while Amsterdam is, from many points of view, the greatest uh, uh, city in Europe in terms of being on a wonderfully human scale and in terms of the sheer wealth of cul uh, cultural uh, gems, I must say that I spend quite a lot of time trying to persuade people to go to Rotterdam as well. It is a glorious city and has an extraordinary skyline, as you can see, and from uh, next year, it will also have a fantastic um, new addition. What you will see is the uh, great, and forgive my pronunciation, everybody in the Netherlands, this is the Depot Boymans van Buningen. Now, uh, it looks a bit like a spaceship that's landed in the city, but instead of aliens, it is going to house art. The depot is the very first art storage facility in the world that offers access to a museum's complete collection. So there will be inside 150,000 works of art. You can explore them with or without a guide. You can get behind the scenes glimpses of conservation and restoration at work. And one more uh, great reason to include the Netherlands' second city in your travel plans. And while you're there, of course, go to Den Haag, go to Groningen, go to anywhere in the Netherlands. A um, wonderful country for traveling, even if you are a British person and you only have pounds to spend. Well, um, this great event is about a train. Yes, not a cultural opening, but one which is going to make a great deal of difference to people who are traveling between the great two cultural hubs of Spain. Um, you know that Madrid and Barcelona are already connected by a fantastic Ave high-speed train in about two and a half hours. Well, what's going to happen from 2021 is that uh, you will be able to get a low cost version, as little as five euros. Uh, like so many things, this was due to start in uh, 2020, but um, it was slightly postponed. It should be starting in the spring. And when it does, it will provide the perfect cultural link uh, between Spain's twin creative hubs. So I'm looking forward to traveling on it very much indeed. Oh no, we're in Britain. Now I'm just showing you this map because it shows what life is going to be like for British people, for trucks going to uh, uh, France, into Belgium, into anywhere else in Europe. Um, this looks like a very bad wartime diagram. It is not. It is exactly what the government is putting out to warn people that we may just turn into one great uh, traffic jam. This is all to do with the uh, uh, county of Kent down here in the bottom right hand side. It simply cannot cope. And so the government has very kindly come up with a plan for where the trucks should go when it all goes wrong. Um, it's uh, just an astonishing national humiliation. And I'm sure that by the time you want to come to the UK, you will be able to um, uh, arrive quite smoothly, whether that's by train or by air. Um, and the reason you might want to come here is a great new development. Uh, this is the Museum of the Home. Very appropriate, given that the UK has decided to leave the rest of Europe behind and stay at home. It's in the Hoxton area of the capital, London. Um, the date hasn't been uh, chosen yet. You can see it's actually in 300 year old almshouses. So it's going to be a great reason to come here. And while you can profit from the fantastic um, uh, low value of the pound, um, everyone with euros or dollars is going to be a king in the UK next year. Um, remember that if you're coming from Europe, you have to arrive with a 
passport from October onwards. It will not be sufficient anymore to have any kind of identity card. You will need a passport. Sorry, it wasn't my idea. Oh, let's go to the US, which at the moment, and uh, good morning to our great friends in America. Of course, at the moment, anybody from Europe, whether that's uh, the Schengen area, whether it's the UK, Ireland, anywhere, is not allowed to go to uh, America. But I will be heading there just as soon as I can. And my prediction for the cultural hotspot in 2021 is going to be the ninth largest city in the small and forgive me inconsequential state of arkansas the town is or the city is bentonville it's the birthplace and galactic headquarters of walmart and they have made billions of pounds of course and some of those billions are going into the momentary uh, this is again something which actually has opened in 2020 but the vast majority of uh, international visitors will not be able to get there until 2021 um there's a great uh, uh exhibition opening on the 20th of February, Derek Adams. It's all about the Green Book, which is uh, the travel guide that was written to help African Americans to uh, navigate around the world, uh, around the south of the United States. So well worth going to that. Bentonville, Arkansas, the momentary. And one more, I think this is possibly going to be the great opening of the decade. It is in Africa, it's in Egypt, it is the Grand European Museum. And uh, <laughs> forgive me, the Grand Egyptian Museum. Um, it's uh, got an incredible breadth and depth of human creativity. It also has a fantastic view of the pyramids. And from sometime in the 2020s, it will be connected by subway, by metro train, with the rest of Cairo. So I can't wait to go there either. So that's what's in store for you for 2021. We've got to rattle through the rest of the decade at one year per minute. Let's see how we get on. Well, um, 2022. Um, the Nordic region's largest art museum should finally be open. It's running two years late at the moment. Art, architecture and design all under one roof in a spectacular new location for the National Museum of Norway, right by the harbour in Oslo um, or Oslo, since it is so delayed. Um, it's enough to make you scream and Edvard Munch's celebrated painting of that name will be back on display, but not until then. Ah, 2023 is my estimate for when the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art will finally open in Los Angeles. Um, it's cost George Lucas $2 billion of his fortune. So it is quite a spectacular location. And I think it is one of those cultural venues, a bit like the Guggenheim in Bilbao, where the structure, uh, which is topped by a large greenery filled terrace, you will notice, is going to be as important as the work it contains. And by the way, it's going to have some very impressive works uh, from Renoir to Rockwell um, and an in-depth exploration of all facets of cinematic art. So get to Los Angeles 2023. Ah, oh, we're back in Paris. Now, the reason we are here is that I have studied all the travel patterns that happen with Olympic years. And it goes all, it, it, going back to Sydney in 2000, uh, followed by Athens 2004, Beijing 2008, London 2012, Rio 2016. It always goes like this. Every hotelier in Paris is going to think, aha, we can charge a fortune. Every airline flying into Paris is going to think we can make a mint on these fantastic uh, uh, events. And some people will be paying a vast fortune. But if you, like me, just wait until maybe six weeks beforehand, you can be absolutely sure that normal tourism to Paris will collapse during the uh, Olympic Games, which means there will be great opportunities for seeing 
all kinds of fantastic uh, museums, galleries, cultural icons without the usual crowds. So I can't wait, frankly, uh, for that. Um, and I urge you to go there. You might also want to do the same, by the way, uh, next year in Tokyo when the 2020 Olympics will be happening just a little behind time. Um, you'll be able to get into uh, these great uh, Fondation, um, funded by uh, very rich corporations. Um, there you have the uh, great um, Olympic, forg forgive me, you have the uh, Fondation Louis Vuitton, and that is going to be joined um, very soon, we hope, by the Fondation Pernel Ricard. Uh, that is the um, uh, current state of events, but it will be finished, I'm sure, in four years from now. Moving across quickly into Germany, this is uh, the heart of the uh, one of the oldest Jewish neighborhoods in Europe, the oldest north of the Alps. Um, it hopes to be in the running for a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the Cajal Colonia, center of Cologne, dates back to the 11th of uh, century when it was one of the most important cities in the world. I think culturally Cologne still very much is. And there's a Jewish museum known as the Mikwa, which is under construction. Um, and by the way, three years after that, so in 2028, Berlin's new Museum of Modern Art is going to open. Another reason to get there. Now, 2026, I just want to tell you that the greatest eclipse of your lifetime, ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to be in the southern part of Europe, is coming your way. This is in August at the height of the European vacation season. A total eclipse of the sun is going to sweep down and it's going to begin in the Arctic, cross Greenland. But then just in at the time you and I will be going out for tapas in Bilbao, it will arrive there. Um, it will then cut across to Zaragoza. Um, and Valencia in, in mainland Spain, and then finally head across to Palma. Um, huge opportunities to build a cultural itinerary with added astronomy. Now, 2027 is my estimate of when I shall be in uh, Saudi Arabia. This is because by then the Jeddah Tower should be open. It is due to dwarf the uh, uh, Burj Khalifa, currently the biggest, high, the highest building in the world which is in dubai of course it's going to stand one kilometer high um extraordinary the observation deck is going to be about two-thirds of the way up um it will also house the highest hotel in the world and let us hope that perhaps by then saudi arabia is a beacon of tolerance to us all 2028 um and beautiful british cities on your left you have oxford on your right you have Cambridge, and they will very simply be connected by rail by then. So you can have walking tours on the same day in both great cities, as well as appreciating dozens of other cultural venues. Ah, now 2029. Oh, this is um, a, a wonderful part of the world, a completely overlooked city. I think uh, you can see Fremantle in the foreground and the city of Perth in the background. And it's the 200th anniversary of the Swan River Colony, as it was originally known when the British took it over, as we are prone to do. Um, and it's the wild west of Australia. Of course, you may already know the bell tower, um, but there's the uh, Maritime Museum out in uh, Fremantle as well. And as one departing mariner's message reads, farewell to the miserable Southland. Well, it's not miserable anymore. And finally, with one minute to go, ladies and gentlemen, I imagine that the most astonishing building in Europe, which of course is the Sagrada Familia, should be well and truly completed by then. Um, it's been fascinating during my lifetime to see uh, Antoni Gaudi's structure so completely transformed. Um, and I think it's probably the world's most extraordinary spiritual and uh, architectural journey. I've thoroughly enjoyed the ride. But something else really important is happening just um, south of, uh, of uh, us in Europe. Um, this is the Great Green Wall. This is planting millions of trees right across Africa. 
it is going to transform the Sahel, which is the region at the south of the Sahara Desert, and it is going to build resistance to uh, climate change. It should also can create 10 million jobs, some of them in tourism, and it will hopefully bring people uh, to see the changing face of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you this afternoon, this evening, this morning. Um, over the next day, decade, remember the world has never been safer. There is so much for you and I to celebrate out there. I look forward to seeing you on the road. Um, meanwhile, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do. Uh, there it is, Simon Calder, the arse fall off a little bit. And I will uh, bid you a very good evening. Congratulations to all the finalists. It's been an absolute pleasure to see you. Thank you for the very much for the opportunity to speak to you. And back to you, Luis. Cheers, everybody.